Here are the top five reasons you suck at building. Number one, shape. Shape is really important because it's an overall defining feature of how other aspects of your house or building are going to look. So right here in front of me, I've built a okay looking front door of some kind of industrial or modern building. Don't judge me, okay? This took me like two seconds. But when you look at this, you're probably gonna imagine a very large rectangular or square like building, which is fine for this style. But when it comes to building a cute little home or something very similar, you're definitely gonna wanna add a little bit more variation in your shape. Let's take a look at these two village houses. This one has one shape, is very small, and very little variation on its outside. This one over here is also pretty small, but it has a little bit of an extension to its normal rectangular shape at its doorway. It also has these cauldrons and roof to add a little bit of extension on the outside of the building. You should try to do more things like the second villager house when you're thinking about what you're going to build. So what I like to do is build the basic shape of my house first and then add on little things I want before I start building. So maybe here I want to put a little extension, make a softer, not so rigid formation back into the normal shape. Over here, maybe I'll add a little bit of a bigger extension and add another small little extension right here, right before this corner. I'll use this as my front door to have it coming out like that. So now that I've added a little bit more to my basic shape, you can already see it's way more interesting than just a basic little square. So let me build this up really quick and I'll show you what it looks like. Here we go. I built up the walls of this house and put a little flooring in and I can definitely see the shape much better, but it's still kind of ugly. So this moves me right along into step two, which is depth and corners. And what I mean by depth is making it so your building doesn't have just one layer. So to add some extra depth, maybe put in some corners that extrude one block or add little roofs that extend out above little crevices. You can also take long spaces and add support. So here we go. I add a little bit more depth to this building by adding some contrasting logs for support beams to make it a little bit more realistic and adding little roofs. And over here, adding another door that leads you out. It's more of a porch type of thing, but I added a little roof on that, some more lighting, some more support. Just make it look as realistic as possible and add some more depth. And as I mentioned, I did use oak logs as the beams to add a little bit more contrast, which brings me to my next point. Number three, variety in blocks, gradients, and colors. I think this is one of the easiest things you can do that's often overlooked and really makes your building stand out compared to others or previous buildings you've had. And I can even use some more early game and pretty generic Minecraft blocks to make this building look way better. So here's the start of the gradient I, I'm doing. These blocks right here, these are the stripped birch logs. Personally, I really like strip logs. I think they they look great, but adding them with these planks, it looks, it's a little bit too contrasting. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of these stripped oak logs to hopefully make the gradient a little bit smoother. All right, so I added some stripped oak logs and it definitely helped the gradient become a little bit more natural and added some block variation. It's a little bit easier to see on the inside here. You can see it kind of goes up from the planks to the stripped oak log to the stripped birch log. And I really like it. I think it kind of draws the eyes from the bottom to the top as it, as it gets brighter. And to go into the second part of this third step with the gradient is using a variety of blocks and colors. Really with the blocks, you can use the same color, just kind of a different shade and block. So you can see these two, they're pretty much the same color, but they're two different blocks, which really adds to the, to the building and different textures, which really makes the build look more realistic and nice. But you don't have to use super similar colors when you're using a variety of colors. You can also use like super contrasting colors. So like if I bring you back over here, you see I have a white and a black and they're common colors for more industrial builds, but it still looks nice. Kind of have to know which colors to use, darker versus light, opposite colors on the color spectrum. Over here, these general browns, similar colors, but it's like a dark versus a light. It's just something to keep in mind. Number four, roofs. I personally dread building roofs. They're a little bit hard to imagine and hard to determine which roof is right for your building. It's super easy to just look up online different roof designs and try to get inspiration, and that's usually what I do. Um, it definitely helps a lot, but for this house, I decided I could either go a flat top roof or I could go one of the generic stair top roofs. And I'm gonna go with the stair top roof because I think it's just, it's a little bit better and kind of more difficult to do. So that's why I'm gonna do it as an example. And I've chosen to go with really dark colors because I was just talking about contrast with colors and I think it'd be nice to add, after the gradient going up from dark to light, add a really dark top to kind of top it off. So I finally have the roof done. I think it looks pretty good, honestly. I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out. There are definitely things I could change to make it better. Overall, it's pretty good. So I can move on to the fifth and final thing on my list, the little details. This step is really just what ties everything together. It adds so much more life and vibrance to a building than just having something like this. Cause this looks pretty good, I'll be honest. It looks pretty decent. 
um, but adding a little bit extra will definitely take it to the next step. I like to use these new flowering azalea leaves because they just, I don't know, they just look so nice. So here it is. Here's my completed exterior of this house I was building. I think it turned out really great. I think the roof definitely could need a little bit of work and we're not gonna talk about the interior for now because I think that's a whole nother story, a whole nother video maybe. But overall, it's way nicer than any village house you might get with super basic shape and design. And it's just the little things that kinda make, make a big difference when you're trying to build a good house. I also decided to use a whole bunch of the new blocks just to add a little bit of greenery. It adds a little bit more personality to the house. So there you have it. There are the five things you might be missing when you're building your house or building. To recap, you need a good shape, you need good depth and corners, you need a good variety of blocks, colors, and gradients, you need good roofs, and you need a lot of good little details. When you're building something, make sure you take inspiration from real life things because in Minecraft, the more realistic you can make it, the better it looks. And I know that's kind of a little bit weird, especially for a block game, but if you can add like support beams and good roofs and you know things you probably see in real life houses and then a little flair of the Minecraft uniqueness, that's, that's really what I think makes a good house. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you want me to do another video on the interior or what you overall think of the house and if I'm missing any things on my list. Have a wonderful day, goodbye.